Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. We just covered that Brew Bound article, going into some details for the first week of April for Bud Light. The headline read that sales were down, it was rough, but quote, not catastrophic. The numbers were bad, frankly, I'd even argue extremely bad, considering it was the lead up to Easter where you'd expect beer sales to be on the rise, but it was only the first week of April. The whole Bud Light controversy hadn't even really started to gain traction. What I said in the previous video was wait till the next week is reported or the week after that. This is the highest pressure boycott I've ever experienced. It seemed as though it snowballed rather than slowed down, and I guess I was right. The initial assessment was that it was rough but not catastrophic. The assessment this week is that it's probably nearing catastrophic for Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some numbers to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this headline from OutKick. Bud Light sales drop 17% after individual who shall not be named disaster. Bud Light has taken a massive sales hit following the decision to team up with a certain TikTok individual. The beer brand under Anheuser-Busch's umbrella has been getting crushed ever since they collaborated with a particular individual, and the latest data is very alarming for the company. Data from Nielsen IQ and Bump Williams Consulting shows the light beer has taken a hit of 17% in dollars sold and volume dropped 21% for the week that ended on April 15th, according to the New York Post. And that right there is what I mean by a snowball effect. That's a significant drop from the previous week. The week that ended on April 8th saw a sales drop of 6% in volume by 11. Essentially, week over week, and just the next week, sales dropped from negative 6% to negative 17, and volume dropped basically double. And also, keep in mind that volume is dropping less than actual dollars sold, because everywhere you go in every single retailer, Bud Light is on mega discount, mega sale at the front of the beer alley. Even with them trying to liquidate the product, volume of sales is down 21%. That is absolutely wild. Meanwhile, Coors Light and Miller Light are up big. The two are up 18% according to the same data. Now, that right there, you cannot convince me is a coincidence. All of a sudden, Bud Light drops by double digits across the board, and all their main American beer competitors start spiking by essentially the exact same level. That's what I call consumer backlash, consumer boycott. In other words, it's working. Remember all the pompous Twitter leftoids claiming Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch know exactly what they're doing. Are you sure about that? I'm not so sure. You know, what we're seeing here is a 17% drop, a 21% drop. When you view it from percentages, it's like, you know, whatever, an X percent drop. But if you think about what that percentage actually equates to, it's millions upon millions of dollars. We're talking about big, big numbers and losses, and that's not even counting the market cap decrease, which has bounced back. But I mean, if their quarterly report is as abysmal as we think it might be, that's not going to last very long. Let's talk about ROI, because all these left Leftoids keep saying, oh, don't worry, it's all according to plan. These Bud Light diversity hire experts know exactly what they're doing. Well, sure, let's have a conversation. The individual here who shall not be named, that was paid to do paid promotion and ad drop for Bud Light, averages anywhere from 2 to 7 million views per video, so let's call it an even 5, that might be stretching it a little bit. These companies that are doing these sponsorship campaigns and paid promotion can pay anywhere from a $35 to a $50 CPM. That's the cost per thousand views, so let's go on the high end once again. For every million views, they'd pay the individual, let's say, $50,000. I don't think it's that high, but it's possible it could be. Let's calculate the most extreme paid sponsorship deal, the most you could possibly get. Let's say they paid this individual $250,000 for 5 million views. That's the $50,000 per million, $250,000. They paid $250,000 for advertising, and they're now losing millions of dollars. That doesn't seem like a great ROI. In fact, that may be one of the worst investments of all time. But don't pay attention to that. No, of course not. Leftist TikTok experts are telling you that it's all according to plan. No way. If that was the case, we wouldn't be seeing the absolute sheer panic going on at Bud Light. I mean, just the retailer panic tells you all that you need to know, like I was mentioning earlier. You'd expect that if they were liquidating the product on crazy, crazy sale, literally anything related to Anheuser-Busch, you'd expect their sales volume to go up. Their sales volume is down 21%. And obviously there's panic at the corporation. First, they ended up firing the affirmative action hire that they had as 
a VP of marketing, she's been placed on leave. Of course, the leftoid experts are saying, no, she didn't actually get fired. She's just been placed on leave. They're just protecting her from the vicious, hate-filled, bigoted right-wing mob. Yeah, not so sure about that one. I don't see her coming back anytime soon, let's just say that. But after that decision was made, the panic continues. Again, this whole thing is a snowball effect. That VP of marketing isn't the only one on the chopping block. Two Anheuser-Busch marketing executives placed on leave. Bud Light package sales and share losses accelerate in boycotts second week. They fired another top marketing executive. Not only Mrs. Alyssa Heinerscheid, but now another individual by the name of Daniel Blake has also been put on leave. Anheuser-Busch released this message. We have made some adjustments to streamline the structure of our marketing function to reduce layers so that our most senior marketers are more closely connected to every aspect of our brand's activities. The spokesperson's statement continued. These steps will help us maintain focus on the things that we do best, brewing great beer for all consumers while always making a positive impact on our communities and our country. Now, this is corporate speak for saying, we want to make sure that these kinds of decisions like picking a side in the culture war and promoting left-wing trends and activism to young kids aren't being made by rogue actors in the company without approval from higher-up executives. Of course, Bud Light is continuing with the same angle of defense that they initially promoted, that it was just a low-level staffer who made this decision, even though we literally have Alicia Heinerscheid on a Zoom call video essentially laying out her strategy. But I think what's happening here is that the executives are stepping in and realizing that they made a grave, serious miscalculation or mistake by hiring these kinds of woke individuals, and they're trying to step in and make sure that it doesn't happen again. They're essentially admitting that it was a massive mistake that it should have never happened without actually saying it. Now look, we'll have to see. I'm not the type of person to refuse any person or entity a chance at redemption. So far, the corporate speak isn't actually convincing. I mean, I don't think it's convincing anyone. But beneath it all, beneath the the legal speak and the PR firm public statements, what I am gathering is that the boycott is working and that Bud Light is kind of indirectly admitting that they made a massive mistake. And so we'll have to see what actions they take forward. So far, these two marketing executives have been put on leave. If in a couple weeks, Bud Light decides to bring them back on and it's business as usual, well then the boycott continues. If Bud Light does the right thing and gets rid of them, fires them, and changes their approach entirely, never targeting our children with left-wing propaganda again, well, well, then you know what? If they take some real concrete action and actually do the right thing, they might earn some credit and there might be some room or some road for redemption. We'll have to see. All I know is that we won't actually be able to affect change and win this culture war if we're unwilling to at least allow an opening towards a path to redemption. I mean, what we're looking for here is an apology and actual change a sign for major corporations to learn a lesson. And so if it happens in this case, I'm counting it as a major, major win. And again, it's more proof as to just how powerful our cultural influence really is. Look at what we could accomplish when we actually play the game. You know, get a little dirty, get involved in the mud fight that the left is always engaged in. That's what I got for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know that we'd love to have you here joining the liberal hive mind community. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll See you on the next one.